and y'all really think people from Africa are your friends. Emmanuel Ocho has never stuck up for black Americans. He has always been trying to make himself great to the other races. Come on now. This girl says she has been th threatened with death, sexual assault, and people are wondering why she's crying. Oh, she wanted to be... Who the hell asked to be sexually assaulted? Who the hell asked to be killed over a basketball game? Huh? How are y'all equivalating she's a thug with something she does on the basketball court? That's just crazy. It's because she beat America's sweetheart last year and she taunted her back. Now all white Americans and sellouts like him want to say, well, she wanted to beat it, villain. Okay, fine. No one asked to be sexually assaulted or killed. All right, guys. So once again, we got to follow up on this Angel Reese story that is not going to end because the pro blackity blacks, right, they cannot let go of the fact that Angel Reese received criticism, right? Because Angel Reese is a black woman who plays college basketball and she received criticism after she decided to boohoo, whine, and cry victim after losing to uh, Iowa in the NCAA Elite Eight Women's Basketball Tournament to avoid criticism because that's what she was doing. Her whole team was doing that, right? They was pulling the victimhood card so that, you know, people wouldn't actually really discuss the game and the fact that they lost. They got their butts whooped, right? So uh, in order to deflect, they decide to, again, all play the victimhood card and, you know, she participated in it, right? And people came out and rightfully criticized Angel Reese for being a so-called leader and a strong black woman. But when it comes time to take that criticism, okay, to actually be strong, she turned into somebody that is very weak and fragile and dependent, right? Again, the opposite of what these people claim that they are, right? When they're on top of the world, they're queens, right? When they lose, they turn into peasants, right? And that's just kind of how it happens, right? That's just kind of how it goes. And the pro-black mob has essentially come out here and decided to crucify anybody that criticizes Angel Reese for pulling the victimhood card. And their number one target today is Emmanuel Acho. Now, we covered this in the past video. Emmanuel Acho gave a gender neutral and a race neutral take on Angel, Angel Reese. He says, listen, I'm not going to belittle you to your race and your gender. I'm actually going to judge you and criticize you as a person, right? Uh, she received the same criticism that any athlete that is seen as cocky or arrogant or over the top or, you know, whatever receives. Like, for example, a Johnny Manziel, a Baker Mayfield, they have received just as much, if not more, criticism, okay, about their attitude and how they go about uh, carrying themselves when they win, when they lose. They've received all that criticism, just as much as Angel Reese, okay, but... Again, people weren't boohoo whining and crying victim, okay, when people were going after straight white men, right? When it happens to the straight white men, they're expected to take it. But when it happens to a black woman, um, no, 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 off limits, right? Cannot criticize her. So, again, the mob has come out and attacked Emmanuel Acho uh, for his take. And he's slowly but surely coming out and basically issuing kind of half apologies. He's getting there. It ain't no apology, but it, it's kind of getting in that realm of, you 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 sound like you about to apologize, right? Because behind the closed doors, the, the pro black mob they they're, they're whipping you, right? They're whipping you. <laughs> I just want to say a quick thank you um, to everyone who has respectfully uh, reprimanded me and uh, offered brilliant opinions on the Angel Reese conversation. I do not believe there is any one way to think about things, but thank you to the Ryan Clarks, the Essence Atkinses, the Bozma St. John's, um, the Trellas, the the different individuals who is publicly and privately um, just giving me good wisdom, good feedback, uh, good, good discernment. Um, I understand. I understand. I understand. I think life is all about understanding. And so I just want to applaud those publicly, you watching, and those privately who have respectfully, the operative word there being respectfully, who have respectfully reprimanded me. Matt Barnes, incredibly, incredibly, incredibly wise words. Um, so I thank all of you all for that. I do not stand on a hill saying that I am right and you are wrong. I simply stand on a place saying, hey, this is what I believe. What do you believe? Let's listen to one another and 
construct a collective belief. So love to everybody who's respectfully reprimanded me and I appreciate it so, so, so very much. Thank you all for that. Yeah, so what you guys are witnessing here, okay, is in slow motion, the proverbial whipping, right? The whipping of the black man that gets out of line if he does not walk the line that so-called black people are supposed to walk when you're in the media, right? When you're in the media as a black person, you're expected to be pro-black, especially in the sports media. This is the same thing that happened to Stephen A. Smith, okay? I'll never forget this, okay? this What happened to Stephen A. Smith told me everything I need to know about Stephen A. Smith, right? With the Colin Kaepernick situation, it was the exact same thing. Stephen A. Smith gave a race-neutral take on Colin Kaepernick, right? He said, listen, Colin Kaepernick really don't want to be in the NFL, okay? He is scamming you guys, okay? He ain't trying to be in the NFL. He wants to be a perpetual victim. That's what he wants to be, okay? He ain't really trying to get back into the league. And Stephen A. Smith was 100% right. But then after that, again, the pro-black mafia, they came out in droves against Stephen A. Smith, okay? They <laughs> whipped him good okay they put him back in line okay because they stripped him of his identity say he ain't black you ain't black okay Terrell Owens went on ESPN to tell uh Stephen A. Smith to his face that Mark Kellerman the white man the liberal white man on the network is blacker than you Stephen A because he has the right opinion on Colin Kaepernick and you don't right this is what happens and this is when Stephen A's race hustling went into overdrive, right? He started basically analyzing everything through the lenses of race, right? Everything, okay? And then at one point, he admitted when he got pissed off about how Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant did not um, essentially allow their team to hire a black coach. He went on the network and was pissed because he was like, listen, behind closed doors, you guys tell me I need to come out here and be pro-black. I need to be out here rooting for black people and doing more for black people with my platform. But yet you guys, when it comes time to hire a black head coach to coach your basketball team, you decide not to do, do so. And he admitted, he admitted at that point that he gets told behind closed doors what to say right? What positions to take on certain issues, especially issues that can be racialized, okay? Same thing is happening with Emmanuel Acho. He is admitting that, hey, behind closed doors, these people are telling me that, listen, you cannot be a so-called black man, which, by the way, they're stripping him of his identity. They're saying, no, you're an immigrant, right? As if, like, that has anything to do with anything, right? But they're saying, he ain't really black. You ain't really black. You ain't really from here, <laughs> right? <laughs> this is what they're saying, okay? And they're, they're stripping him of his identity, because of the fact that he is a so-called black man in the media not pushing the race hustle, right? If you're black in the media and you're not pushing a race hustle, this is the type of backlash that you get, right? So, again, people are mad, right? They're pissed off. And uh, although he didn't apologize, you can tell he's in the beginnings of issuing an apology, right? He's getting on his knees. That slow bending of the knee that always happens and then eventually he's going to come out and he's got to get that apology. <laughs> because that's what Angel Reese is demanding, right? She responded. She says, make sure that apology is as loud as the disrespect. Okay, so again, apparently criticism is disrespect, right? So the queen uh, turned into a victim <laughs> right after she lost, okay, and got a little bit of criticism. So again, you know, this is what they're saying. It's disrespectful to criticize her, right? So that takes us to uh, CNN. Uh, who is platforming another liberal black woman, a uh, Cree champion who, just like Jamel Hill, uh, is washed up in the sports media. Nobody really cares about what she has to say. But on topics like this, they're going to bring her on to uh, spew her nonsense, <laughs> right, about this situation and how, you know, you, you really can't analyze this situation without uh, race and gender, okay? And, you know, conversations like this are really going to reveal who thinks highly of uh, Angel Reese and who doesn't and I'm telling you the pro blacks don't they actually really don't think highly of her and I'm gonna tell you guys why just from this conversation but again remember when it comes to <laughs> dealing with liberal women especially liberal black women they have three altars right three altars the narcissist altar the racialist altar and the uh, feminist altar right and you're kind of seeing all that <laughs> play up in this story about Angel Reese which is why I find this story to be so fascinating because it really does show you uh, how a lot of these liberal women think, right? And um, it, it really is a fascinating story. So without further ado, let's get into this clip. Joining me now, sports journalist and CNN contributor, Carrie Champion. So, look, first of all, <laughs> I she 
it is now going to the WNBA. So she is not, she lost a game, but she is not a loser by any stretch of the imagination. But why that reaction? You know, I, well, first of all, I think that I want to give just a little context. Her saying that she was a self-proclaimed villain was based off an article that someone had wrote about the team, and she said, fine, I'll be your villain. And she's 21 years old, and I'm going to keep saying that. She's 21 years old. The maturation of this young lady, we haven't even begun to see, or began to see, rather. And I think it's unfair for us to say, this is who she is. Emmanuel Acho decided to give this critique, and if he was really, truly trying to help her, he would have called her up and said, listen, this is what this looks like. He would not have went on a show to say that he's giving a gender neutral, race neutral take and make it about her. It's impossible to do. She's also wow. Wow. She said a whole lot there uh, that we got to break down, right? Let, let's start here. So basically what she's saying is that, no, no, no. If your job is to commentate on sports in public, if you're going to criticize Angel Reese, who happens to be a black woman, then you have to do it behind closed doors. Don't do it publicly. Now, in public, you can give her all the praise in the world, right? You make sure that you do nothing but praise her in public. But if you have criticisms for her, then you have to do it in private. You understand how this works? But these are the same people who will boohoo, whine, and cry, and bitch until oblivion about women's sports not making a lot of money, not getting paid, not getting attention. When, how the hell are you supposed to get attention for the sport when you're telling me that because she's a black woman, she can't be criticized, okay? Even if you are a sports journalist, you're a sports writer, you're a sports commentator, your job is to commentate on sports. What you're telling me is that when it comes to this one genre of sport, okay, when you have black women, you cannot criticize them. So how the hell is the WNBA, how the hell is women's college basketball supposed to grow in popularity to make more money if you can't even criticize certain players? It doesn't make sense. What makes these sports great, what makes the NFL great, what makes the NBA great is the drama. It's the fact that you can come out here and criticize these players and to say what you want to say about them in their game and the way they act and how they carry themselves. It's the fact that you can freely state your opinion, right, without being called a bigot, okay? But apparently you can't do that. You cannot do that when it comes to women, okay? Especially black women, you can't do that. So how how is the WNBA or women's college basketball supposed to compete with men, how are they supposed to get paid the same as men when you're not allowed to criticize them the same way that you're allowed to criticize men? How is it possible? See, again, this is a, just another example of how women want all the benefits of being a man without having to actually go through the things that men go through in order to reap the benefits of being a man, right? They want, they want all that. They want all the benefits of it, but they don't want to go through it. They don't want to go through the criticism. They don't want to go do the dirty work and, and to get the dirty jobs, right? But they want to be the CEO. They don't want to take responsibility and accountability for anything. But again, they want to be given all the praise as the boss, the queen, the person that's running stuff. But they don't want the same responsibility and accountability. That's exactly what you're seeing right here. This is exactly what they're saying. We want women's sports to get more attention. We want people to care more about women's sports. But you can't criticize women without being a bigot. So again, how is the sport supposed to grow? Why should people care? Because if you're telling me that I can't criticize a black woman playing basketball without being racist or sexist, then I'm not going to watch it. I don't care. Screw them. Screw them. Because there's no point, right, of me watching it if I can't freely have an opinion. That's the whole point of sports. The whole point of sports is being able to watch people play. And then afterwards, you commentate and you tell and you say, hey, this is how I think this person played. I mean, if you don't allow free criticism, then your sport can't be su successful, right? That's the key to a sport being successful, the commentary around it, the criticism around the players, the story around the players. They don't even realize they're working against what they claim they want. They don't even realize it. They don't even realize it. Furthermore, what she's also saying here is that Angel Reese cannot be criticized without her race and sex been a factor. So what they're doing is that they're using racist ideology to reduce Angel Reese down to nothing but her genitalia and her skin color. This is what they're doing. They don't even realize it.
Because what Emmanuel Acho did was he said, listen, Angel Reese is more than her skin color and her sex. She's more than that. So therefore, I'm going to take that out of it. And I'm going to just criticize her based off of just her, right? Her character, just her, who she is as an individual, having nothing to do with her race and sex. Because she's more than that, right? She's more than just being a black woman, right? There's more to her than that. So I'm going to stick with that. That is actually the highest level of praise that you can give somebody, right? When you're talking about criticizing them, you're saying, well, I'm not going to criticize you based off, you know, being black and a woman. No, I'm, I'm going to criticize you based off who you are as a person because you're more than just, you know, your skin color and your race. But not according to uh, Kree Champion. According to Kree Champion, Angel Reese is nothing more than her race and her sex. Therefore, you cannot talk about her without mentioning that because that is who she is. That's all she is. That's all these people see her as. But they're too stupid and caught up in their race narrative and their gender narrative to actually really see that you're, you are actually using racist ideology to basically say that Angel Reese, there's nothing more to her than just her skin color and her genitalia. That's it. That's the only thing that, that is to her. There's nothing else to her other than that. And that is an insult to her. They don't even realize you're insulting her. That's what you're doing. That's exactly what you're doing. And that's the hilarious part about it. So talking about, I mean, it's not it's not just about people calling her names. She's talking about death threats. She's talking about- She's had a tough time. Again, she ain't going through nothing more than what any other athlete goes through. Again, to act like this is unique to her, again, it's just ridiculous, right? It is just, it's, it's like nonsense. It really is, okay? But again, this is what I try to tell you guys. They're strong and independent until it becomes time to be strong and independent. And then when it comes time to be strong and independent, you're fragile and you're dependent because that, that's exactly what's happening here. She should better deal with it just like every other athlete deals with it. You're not the only athlete to go through this type of stuff. Any athlete, any person really, with any sort of fame or notoriety deals with this stuff. Period. It happens. And I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying this is not unique. So again, if you're strong and independent, why is it that we boo we should boo hoo whine and cry tears of victimhood for her when we don't do that for other people? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. At, and this was before this moment. Well, she so, was even younger at that point. I think, unfortunately, and I'll just I'll say the ugly thing out loud: when a black woman with power really expresses herself in her full power, it makes people uncomfortable. And well, and she doesn't have any power, right? I mean, that's the that's the irony here. What she's actually showing is that she's not powerful. She's just weak, right? And that she can be bought down easily with the same type of criticisms that every other athlete receives uh, when they lose, right? Uh, yeah, she can be bought down to her knees easily. That's why you guys are coming out of woodwork to defend her, right? If she was actually powerful, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. She wouldn't be demanding an apology. Why, why should a powerful person want to demand an apology? What would they need an apology for? Did Caitlin Clark demand an apology? From Angel Reese, when Angel Reese again was all in her face, okay, after Angel Reese won the uh, national championship game, nah, Kaylin Clark came out here and said, yeah, well, that's just a part of the game, right? I don't think there's any racism involved or anything like that. Like, I don't, I don't think that, you know, any of, you know, the, the criticisms of me are uh, out of place or anything like that, or anything she did was wrong. She just took it in stride. That's power, right? That's a powerful person. And then came back and, and whooped them the next year. That's real power, right? What Angel Reese is displaying is not power. It's, it's, it's weakness, okay? And to try to frame it as if it's power is just, <laughs> it's nonsense. These people have no clue what power is at all. And that is what she did. At 20 years old, she said, I am me, see me, I am all of me. Good, bad, ugly, indifferent. And it made everyone uncomfortable. Yeah. And so she decided, guess what? I'm going to own it. And you know, this Vogue spread, I, it's so notable for a, a couple of reasons for me. First of all, she said she did it because Serena Williams did I it, saw which that. is kind I of a that. flex in yeah. a certain way. Uh, but also, <laughs> but also, I mean, these, these young women's college basketball players, Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, uh, you know, others, they are coming up in an era where they can now have endorsements. Yeah. They can be famous. Sure. People know their name. Yeah. This is a different moment. Well, these... Yeah, but you guys are trying to paint them as victims, <laughs> even though they have all these things that, you know, I would say a lot of female athletes didn't have access to just a few years ago, right? But yet again, they're the victims, though. They're the victims because they're getting a little bit of criticism, right? They're getting what comes 
with fame and fortune. So anyways, okay, you see that, you heard that, okay? The mob is attacking Emmanuel Acho. They are not letting this go, right? Andrew Reese is demanding an apology uh, because once again, as you can see, there's a certain group of people who really, really, really want to obtain that most powerful Infinity Stone of Wokeness, right? They really want to be like the people who do have the most powerful Infinity Stone of Wokeness, and, and they're trying really hard, right? They're trying extremely hard to get there, and it is really fascinating to see it happen in real time, okay? But let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a Black Conservative perspective. Peace.